What's up guys, welcome back to the Coach's Corner where we answer your questions sent in by you guys at our Squat Club Instagram page, Squat Club AU. How is everyone? Great. No one in the corner today? Empty. Lenka! <laughs> Lenka disappeared for four weeks. Going to Africa. She's getting paid too well. I know, how do I get a job like that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay. Uh, let's get into your questions. First one, I've seen a lot of your female clients on your videos and stories doing chin-ups. What can I do to help improve my chin-ups? My goal is to do one street body weight chin-up. What do you guys do with your clients? Practice, practice, practice. Eccentrics, actually. So yeah. I would do your normal set, like of whatever it is, um, like say three sets of 10, three sets of eight, um, but then finish off with eccentrics. So jump up and then just slow them along. Yeah. down, do that to max reps, so however many you can get out, it makes it better. That's what I do. Yeah. Like, if you want to get better at chin-ups, you have to do chin-ups. <laughs> um, eccentrics is obviously the easiest part, portion of the um, chin up, so you focus on that first. Yeah. Um, isometric second, so up the top, hold, um, and then obviously the concentric, pulling yourself up is the last part, which is the hardest. But I would um, increase the time, so if you're doing eccentric five seconds down, maybe I'll just increase, make it slower over time. Um, and yeah, that's the main goal. Even just some supplementary exercises like rows or anything like that, which will improve your yeah. um, pulling strength as well. Um, yeah. Bands, yeah. yeah so band and chin ups is good. You want to get yeah. better at that as well. Yeah. What about you, Megan? Yeah, just practicing. I think, you know, at least twice a week you can do them. Yeah. yeah. Repetition, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I always stay away from failure as well. As soon as you're hitting that failure, it's hard for you to complete the next set with chin ups. Um, so, like, I mean, I always just try to, like, for my girls to make sure that we're getting like an RPE, an 8 out of 10, just to make sure that we've still got some left in the tank for the next sets. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's, it's like isometric holds, eccentric holds, um, and increasing your seconds. So yeah, I do exactly exactly the same. I also look at trying to find where your weakness is, is as well off the movement. When if you are doing a chin up with a band, and seeing if it's like the start of the movement or the middle part of the movement or at the top, and then that way then you can do like the isometrics, like what we we're talking about, and holding yourself in that position for a period of time, and then increasing your seconds um, as the weeks go on. Or, you know, like you said as well, maybe like frequency, mm -hmm. doing it like two or three times a week. Um, yeah, doing that, you'll nail your chin ups. Okay, uh, if I'm hoping to build definition and muscle, am I better off using heavier weights or doing more reps with lighter weight? Mm -hmm. What do we do? Spoke up this other week. Right. In our Friday meeting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Muscle gains and brain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our Friday segment. Do you guys remember? <laughs> this is a test. <laughs> I ran that session, so I'm not talking. Do you remember? What are we talking about? Intensity and volume? Yeah. yeah. Um, volume is king of hypertrophy, so look at that. Um, are you better off with your... Explain. What is volume, though? Overall training volume, so your, your sets, your reps, your weights are pretty much accumulated together. Um, so for example, if you do the squat at 100 kilos, 3 sets of 5, that would be that volume. Um, you kind of want to look at, it depends on the person, how many sets per muscle group if you're looking that for that. Um, but the overall training volume is going to be the big factor. So if you're just doing one set of squats, you can't expect to use quads for it, pretty much. If you're doing maybe 15 sets of quads overall, then you're looking at probably better um, hypertrophy from that. But in terms of a lighter weight or heavy weight, um, so yeah, if you want to, you can do both. Um, if you want, it's like, it's like, yeah, you, you can, if you do heavy loads, um, obviously you just got to be careful of being fatigued, um, form, everything like that. So I would probably stick, um, like we spoke about the other week, in a moderate band, so anywhere from like 60 to 75%, and that way you get um, maximum motor unit improvement and you're not going to be as fatigued if you're heavier loads and your form is going to break down. And that's 60 to 75% of your 1RM. Yeah. So your 1RM is the maximum, maximum lift, that, like weight yeah. that you can lift, yeah, and then you calculate off that. And yeah. so your three sets of five will be at 75. Yeah. yeah. And then if you're doing lighter weights, um, obviously if it's below 50%, um, it's not going to be as effective um, unless, like we did the other day, if you go to failure, which will be the same as the moderate bands, 
um, roughly. Um, so if you can leave light away, then you probably will get some um, muscle mass increase, but it's not going to be as effective. So I'll probably just, a good rule of thumb is just kind of being in a challenging, like make sure you're being challenged with weights, that's the main thing. Um, that's my opinion. Mm. Yeah. It would be, like, make sure that you can recover from that too. Like, it's one yeah. thing to push yourself in the gym, but if yeah. your nutrition and your recovery oh, is there, yeah. your muscle isn't going to grow. Yeah. Like, yeah. you need that recovery. And yeah, you, as you can't just always be lifting yeah. heavy loads because it's going to be hard to recover. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. it's about pretty much all our balance and having a good mixture of both, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I know a big thing that we push as well um, is like your RPE scale, so rate of perceived exertion and just and seeing. You know, the intensity levels and how challenging that the weight is, is going to be for you for the set. So, you know, we're prescribing our clients like an RPE 7 or an 8, sometimes 9, occasionally a 10 out of, out of 10. Um, yeah, probably, probably be best if you just have a quick Google and see what an RPE scale is and it'll show you basically how many reps are left in reserve based on the number that is prescribed. So, uh, yeah, kind of looking between that 7 to nine on occasions or sometimes ten too so that's another thing too is consistency oh, yeah. so stick to a program structure so, yeah and then so you know what you're doing like if you've got too much variety in there yeah really and if your um if your goal is strength as well then obviously you're gonna be lifting heavy loads but if your goal if you could get away with not lifting heavy loads moderate loads if you just want to build muscle if you want to get strong which is normally good feeling um you're gonna have some heavier weights in there mm. Okay, uh, how much rest should you be having between sets for ATP PC renewal? It's two to three minutes. Mm. Um, it depends on, on the specific lifts too. A good rule of thumb, just nice and simple. Two to three minutes of strength. I normally say if you're doing like single joint exercises, 60 seconds to 90 seconds is generally pretty good. Like if you're doing like squat, heavy squats, you're not going to be recovered in 60 seconds. Um, so two to three minutes. So that can be up to six minutes if he's heavy to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or that if you're doing a real heavy set, real heavy, like yeah. squats, deadlifts. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Nalan, I want to know, is pre-workout bad for you? That's probably a broad question, but what, which ones are good and which ones are bad? Or should you steer clear altogether? What are you using? I don't need anything. Want coffee? Vegan? Yeah. yeah, I'll take like a sugar-free energy drink for a pre-workout from a big leg I need it. Yeah. I'm usually eating. Me. I'll eat before I train. Make sure that I have a sufficient meal. Give me about an hour before. Um, and lately I've been having just coffee, but with just cold water quickly, like, and, and just trying to have a shot. <laughs> it's not nice, but it's, it, it's so, lately it's been effective. Yeah. Um, and then I've, I've been having like a little sugar hit and like a handful of Skittles and a chocolate bar, so <laughs> getting, getting that into yeah, some yeah. energy. But yeah, I'm not really taking much pre-workout. Um, it's um, definitely not essential. It's not essential. And I wouldn't say it's also bad for you. Anything in high amounts is going to be bad for you. So if you heavily, heavily rely on it, like just like if you had like eight coffee a day, like it's going to be Your body will adapt to it as well. Yeah, so, think yeah. the caffeine as well. It could be effective, but I think, you know, look at trying to maybe like cycle. I'd say yeah, use it sparingly. Like mm -hmm. if you got your nutrition right and your sleep, and then you're obviously not tired. If you're like trying to train, you're so tired, and you're oh, to do pretty workout. Well, how about you get your sleep and your nutrition right, and then worry about that. Like, is it, how much is it going to add to your workout? Yeah. And are you being consistent? Like, is there other variables that yeah. you can improve on to get more out of your workout? Yeah. Like you said, you know, sleep, food, sleep having a meal before. Having a meal before. And there's better very research nice. around caffeine. Just that's a pretty simple thing like you were having mm. as a yeah. fat oxidation mm. um, performance so mm. save your money yeah, yeah it's not that's essential it's yeah. essential but I mean like it, could, it had its place sometimes it does but, yeah. sometimes you need to keep it yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Sometimes you have had like maybe a big night or something. I don't know. <laughs> you're going out, you're going out, take it for a big night. <laughs> if you're going out, you're going out for a big night, night. take it for a break out. Is that what you're bad at? <laughs> yeah, it keeps me going all night. Right. And I crash. Bang. <laughs> yeah, that's the place. But yeah. I would, if, if you're thinking it's going to be bad for you, if you're, if you're using it every single day and you're like in high amounts, then probably. Yeah. But you probably see as well, like going back to food, you know, if, if you've worked out beforehand on every stomach, you just know, you know the intensity level is going to be there. 
you're not going to be pushing yourself. So making sure that you're, you know, you're fueling yourself before a training session. And that's why we talk about, you know, like we said, don't we like eating around your training sessions? Very well, yeah. Yeah, just to ensure like you know you're going to get you know, over really good intensity out of your you know, an effective workout. You know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Hope that helps. Yeah. Um, that's it. All the questions done and dusted. Short and sweet, straight to the point. Uh, if you guys have more questions for us for next week, then make sure you shoot it through to our Instagram page. Don't comment them on the photo. <laughs> uh, stab. Um, yeah, shoot them through to our inbox, Scott Club AU, and uh, we'll answer them for your next episode. Speak to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.